baby, baby, baby. You driving me wild, you driving me so crazy. Got me acting out, got me tryna stay sober. Got me tryna stay sober. One of your love and I'm out here hungover. You make me wanna take you to London, Paris. Make some time for cherries. Don't compare it to you. What up kids? Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're doing well and I hope everything is wonderful in your world. It's been a minute. It's been a hot minute, hasn't it? Um, for a while there I was maintaining with about a video a month and kept it rolling, but man, you know how the, the second shoe falls? What is it? The second shoe drops? Whatever that expression is. The other shoe drops? Well, that kind of happened in our family. And so I'm going to get ready for work. I figured this is the only time I'm going to have time to do this, so I was anxious to get back to it. I'm going to try to do it twice a week. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed for Sherry. But anyways, today I'm just going to do a regular work appropriate look. I am going to use this little guy, which I got around Christmas time because it's just the cutest thing ever. Teddy Bear by Too Faced, and it's just beautiful sherry colors enough said <laughs> so I'm gonna use that and just do a you know just a regular pretty uh, neutral look for work and just kind of talk to you guys about what's been going on so if you are down for that then just keep watching so I've already done my skincare and I already have on my Porefessional and my Primer Spray by Smashbox. I've been doing a crazy combination of all kinds of foundations because my skin tone is so different and weird right now. So I'm using the Pure 4-in-1 Love Your Selfie along with the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Wear and the where did it go where did it go the born this way matte by Too Faced so I have them all mixed up here they're actually still looking a little bit dark but we'll roll with it for now and I'm probably gonna zoom through this stuff get to the eyeballs that's the fun part right but as I put this on we'll just talk a little bit about what's been going on um, I think I had made a video telling you guys that I had COVID. It was in August, so it's been a long time. It was at the very beginning of school. But everything has seemed like a whirlwind since then. Like it has just been a whirlwind of everything. From, you know, people at school getting sick, back and forth with that. Um, we had a big time deal with my mom and that's been quite a challenge. Um, more so for my dad and for her than it has been for me but still when you love someone it affects you right and so anyway um i always go in spread this out with my brush and then go in with my beauty blender um my mom has had afib for a long time which is like an unsteady heartbeat and racing heart and it's always been one of those things that wasn't very severe but then all of a sudden got super severe where it was affecting her um, where she couldn't she when she had AFib it would literally like knock her out where she was just without any energy for days like if she went through an episode and had it for several days she was just you know completely knocked out and I don't, that's not the right word but just like in bed sleeping worn out just from that the stress of that i would kind of compare it to like a flare with someone with fibromyalgia that kind of thing um and i'm using a aura shell rsl sponge that i got from either ipsy or boxy charm i went back to ipsy for a little while uh have since unsubscribed again <laughs> it's like every time i do it i think why am i doing this uh, these products generally go in my drawer and I don't use many of them, but I do like their add-ons and that's what reminds me That's why I do it because I get some good add-ons like some wishful Skincare recently and some different things like that, but back to the subject um, her cardiologist had said that 
he thought she was a good candidate for a device called a watchman and I am not completely sure what it's for but since people with AFib are at risk of stroke I think what this does is it puts a kind of a mesh or a guard in the artery of the heart and keeps blood clots from coming through if I'm not mistaken. They told her it would change her life that she would be so much better and of course her cardiologist referred her to somebody who did this another doctor and so um, she was super uneasy about it and scared and prior to it she had been so sick that she was just really just like you know this is not fun I don't want to be here I don't like this you know basically saying if I don't survive this it's okay which was really hard for all of us to take but you know whenever you're almost 80 and you're going through anything that has to do with your heart well that's kind of understandable I found that these foundations kind of oxidize so when I first put them on they look a little bit uh, too white but then as I set it I mean even on my hand you can see that it's well maybe not <laughs> it's turned kind of orange at least darker and I have not seen the Sun for a long time and because of COVID it took a long time for them to get that approved and to get that rolling and so to make a long story short, and I still even now don't have all the details, she went in for the watchman. Some mistake was made. I don't know if it's something that they knew could happen or if it was a risk of it. We don't really know. I don't really know. It's one of those things where you just kind of don't want to talk about it too much because it's a painful subject. Um, I'm using the one size uh, concealer and some Bobbi Brown corrector. Um, to make a long story short, they punctured or perforated one of her heart arteries and to, you know, to the tune of her having a ma massive bleed where they had to do emergency open heart surgery. And, uh, obviously not in the plans and so um in the process of that she did pass away and they did give her cpr and brought her back um that's hard to stomach just knowing that she was gone even temporarily um when she woke up to you know icu and found out, you know, looking down and saw a giant scar on her chest, she was not happy. And obviously nobody would, you know, be happy about that. But she was just like, you know, why didn't you just let me go? I was ready to be with my Lord. I mean, she was just like so angry and even angry at my dad for, you know, not letting her go. Because, you know, when you get to that age, you have those discussions about what you would do with your spouse, for your spouse, whenever you're, if you're in certain situations about what you would want them to do. And um, anyway, it was one of those things where she was in surgery. They came out and told my dad she was having, they were having complications and they luckily had a, one of their top notch uh, cardiologists on call. He came, did the open heart surgery and they saved her. Um, at that point we were like okay you know we didn't know where she was as far as health was concerned like if she had a chance to survive it what it was going to be like for her and she was actually um after the surgery on a ventilator intubated and so um you know not even really aware of what was going on for the longest but um they did take the ventilator out obviously and she she made it through that okay and uh I mean, using the Fenty butter powder, a uh, setting powder. Anyway, um, this is so involved. I'm trying to decide what to say, what to say, and what to leave out because there's just so much. Um, my brother Roger came and helped um, one day in the hospital, and he had COVID. 
my dad was trying really hard to go back and forth to the hospital because he didn't want to stay in a hotel he has a dog all the things I was trying to um, take care of the dog and do what I, dad needed done at home I was also sick I didn't think I had COVID but at the same time I was really scared to go around her knowing how vulnerable she was with any kind of sickness so it was really hard because I couldn't be there and I felt like I couldn't help like I wanted to well thank God my brother Rocky came from North Carolina and he stayed for I don't know 10 or 12 days the whole time almost the whole time mom was in the ICU and uh, they moved her down to like a step two which I don't know if anybody knows what that means but it basically is still on the ICU floor with the same ICU nurses but just not under such extreme uh, observation and uh, it got to the point where I think I was most concerned about her state of mind and the fact that you know I didn't know if she was still gonna fight I don't know if she if she had any fight left in her and that's what I was worried about because gosh you know just being a person who has had health issues after a while you just get so tired and only people that have had long-term health issues will understand that sometimes you just get tired you just don't want to do it anymore you don't want the doctors anymore you don't want the medications anymore you don't want to try anything anymore because in general it doesn't get better it gets worse a lot of the times the treatments are worse than whatever's making you sick so I mean I understood where she's coming from but I was worried about her frame of mind because she you know was already kind of in a place where she's just like Whew, I'm done with this you know I'm going to put some uh, chocolate soleil as a little contour and some butter bronzer um, just to smooth it out a little and add some more warmth. But uh, she was kind of in a situation where there were a couple of days where they thought there were a couple of things they could do, an ablation of some kind. and. A couple things that were on the table and they just didn't know if her heart was strong enough if she was strong enough to make it through the procedures and uh, hospitals right now with COVID and people and them being shorthanded like it's just been getting anything done or finding out any information from anyone it's like pulling teeth you know they just I don't know it was like a conveyor belt of people that they just had to I don't know, make their way through and it was like not personalized. It was hard. And uh, I'm not saying anything bad about them, about the nurses. They do the best they can. I mean, they're overworked, underpaid, just like teachers. And, you know, this has been terrible for, for healthcare staff with COVID and, and all that's involved and all this man, or, you know, mandate craziness with the vaccines. And I mean, just oh my gosh you guys it's just been too much it's been too much and um, I, I don't know how many times I've said that in the last few months you know the last six months even I'm like this is too much this is too much everything all of this is too much like, how much more can we take and you keep saying that and then something else happens so they decided they were going to give her something called a I think it's a UV node ablation. I might have the the letters wrong, but I think it, that's what it's called. Where basically they, um, she already had a pacemaker. They add another wire into another part of the heart and they disconnect somewhere else. <laughs> and it makes it where the pacemaker fully is responsible for the beating of the heart. And so I'm looking for a blush here. This is the Cover FX monochromatic blush duo in Mojave Mauve. I'm going to use my Jaclyn Hill. I love her highlighters iced for my highlighter. It's beautiful. So um, they did a test on her and they kind of determined that she wasn't strong enough to do what they were talking about. It's like okay what now then? And some other guy came in and examined her and he decided that he thought she was. 
And so that was scary. That whole thing was scary. You know, is she going to survive this one? Well, she did. And uh, after a few days after the procedure, they got uh, her moved to um, the rehab floor at Stillwater which helped immensely. Dad was so worn out from driving back and forth. I only drove there once or twice. Maybe once. I don't know. Most of the time I was away from her because I was trying to keep from making her sick. And I was trying to do stuff at home. Um, with Rocky there, it was so helpful. It was so helpful. And uh, it all kind of ran into the holidays because my brother had already planned to come for Christmas. Um, so my mom got moved to the hospital in Stillwater. That was so much easier for everybody. So we spent a lot of time there over the, I was on break. So I got to spend a lot of time there, but it was hard because she was so sad and so like just not wanting to be there. And it's just like, oh my gosh, you know, I just want her to believe that you know there are greater days ahead that there are good days left to have and joy left to have and you know it's like one of those things where faith comes in and you say okay god had a reason for bringing her back here and i never believed that he would bring her back here just to let her suffer for the rest of her days and so i always have to believe that there's a you know there are better days ahead for her and um, we had a medical crisis with her before about nine years ago and she had you know after getting through the hard part of that she had a good long you know length of time where she had quality of life and I'm so thankful that we had her here you know for those times there's so much that she would have missed but I'm so glad she didn't miss you know, the birth of my grandbabies, uh, getting to know them, um, you know, the birth of great grandbabies that they would have, that she would have never met. You know, those are the kind of things that I'm so glad that she was still here for. But I can't lie, there were a lot of times when I was saying to myself, oh my gosh, you know, am I being selfish by wanting her to stay here when she don't want to be here anymore? And that was really hard. And so I'm going to take a break real quick and go off camera and do my eyebrows because that takes a long time and I need to concentrate and I'll be back. I'm going to go in with my Clean Canvas Base by Jura Cosmetics and then set it with some translucent powder. Um, so we got mom back to Stillwater, which was wonderful. My dad didn't have to drive so much and um, Rocky came and his family came for Christmas and so they all got to see mom. Um, it was it was hard because she you know she couldn't get up to use the restroom by herself she was on a lot of pain medication and um, because of the heart stuff and the uh, wiring and all the new hardware um, she couldn't use her hands so using your hands and arms to get up when you're in pain is <laughs> like essential so she was really struggling and struggling emotionally and it was just hard. It was just hard. Um, I try to go up there almost every evening. I think she ended up being there for about 10 days and uh, she was there for Christmas. And she was glad that she was there for Christmas because she was afraid she would have been overwhelmed with too many people around and everything. And so she made it through, she got home. Um, so now I do my best to uh, go and help when I can, go give my dad a break, a chance to go um, get groceries, run errands, have appointments, whatever he needs to do. Uh, my cousin Donna has been incredible. She spent a lot of time with my mom in Tulsa giving Rocky a break. Um, she came, brought her home actually to Stillwater, helped get the house cleaned up for them. Um, she's been coming once a week and just doing whatever they need done to the house and helping dad keep that up and giving him a chance to have like one day a week where he can go do his uh, errands and things and uh, you know he's just full-time 
taking care of her in full time stress out. And so my heart is with him all the time and worried about him as well. So it's been a very trying time and we're just all doing the best we can trying to figure out what our new normal is going to be. Um, and this last week I got super sick and super sick with a terrible headache, a fever. Um, and I couldn't figure out, I mean, like it was so familiar to the way I felt when I had COVID. Like I was just sure I had COVID again. I need to bring you guys in closer. Right now I'm just putting this cream shade under my eyebrows. My eyebrows are a little shaggy. They need some work, but that's kind of been at the bottom of my to-do list. Uh, there's been a lot of other things that are way more important. Um, so this whole last week I missed work, which was terrible, which I really can't afford to do because I'm low on sick days and all the things. But, um, you know, that's the way it is. And I stayed home, I got well, I took three COVID tests, never to be positive, so thank goodness for that. Let me zoom you in. Welcome to my face. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go in with this super light, kind of mustardy transition, and then I'm gonna go into this shade. But actually, I changed my mind. I'm gonna go into this one, and then this one. So, um, it's just everything's been a challenge and seeing your mom, you know, in a bad way is so hard and trying to keep her encouraged and not be scared and not be worried about her and worried about dad and just trying to trust God that everything's going to be okay and trying to help her find joy, help her smile, um, take some of the burden off of him when I can um, is what my focus is right now. That's what my... Um, the top of my to-do list is taking care of them and making sure they have what they need and that neither one of them loses their mind and it's hard when you're going through stuff like that you know roles change and going from a husband to a caretaker is difficult I know that because I went from a wife to a caretaker and it's hard it's hard to realize that that's what you are and and you know, luckily my husband has been doing pretty good and he's, you know, pretty independent. Um, so that's been great. And it's, it's funny how one thing gives you a break because you have something else that takes precedence. But so that's been good. Um, yeah, he's on dialysis three times a week, but he's, he's doing well. His numbers are staying good. Um, so that's what's been going on. Uh, it's funny because in the meantime of over Christmas and you know, my other brother came and his kids got to see mom and it was all good, but she was sad because she felt like everybody was just coming to say their last goodbye to her, which oh, that's a sad feeling to hear somebody say that. But, you know, it is what it is. And I was like, no, we were all just, you know, we just all want to see you. Everybody is here for Christmas and everybody just wants to see you, you know. But I have to admit that, you know, I left that hospital like in the car crying a lot of the time because it was just hard to see and hard to hear. Um, but anyway, um, we got through all that. I'm gonna, today will be my first day back to work. I do believe that I have some kids that are still out with COVID or at least quarantined because of COVID in their family. Um, I'm getting a new student today. So today's gonna be a busy day of getting everybody settled back in and back into a you know routine of how we do things and yes your teacher's finally here and yes the mean girl is is finally back <laughs> to get you keep you on your toes nah i'll be really happy to see them actually and so that's what's up for today but in the meantime of christmas and all the things that went on I'm so thankful to be well again, and I have a new obsession, dip powder nails. And they don't, they don't look fabulous, but they look pretty good compared to how they did. <laughs> I'm learning, but um, letting my nails grow out, and I was looking for a way to only have to do my nails a couple times a month, and so far this is working. I'm learning as I go. I'm learning a lot from other YouTubers 
And so I was thinking maybe someday if I ever get good enough at it, I may make some videos and like have a Manny Monday or something like that and show you what I did for the couple weeks or whatever. Okay, I think I'm gonna just go deeper and deeper. I think I'm gonna go into this one and then this one. And these don't have names on them, it's on the back. I'm not even gonna bother with it. And I'm also gonna put this one on, um, probably these two on the lower lash line. This is really about catching up with you, not so much about the makeup, but just in case you were wondering. Uh, so, I've been learning about dip powder nails and gel methods and liquids, different liquids and different tools. And so, I like them. I think they're pretty, very shiny and very strong. And so, I think I can grow my nails out, but I'm also getting impatient because I really want to have longer nails. And so, I'm thinking about uh, potentially putting on some full um, cover extensions or like full cover tips. They make gel tips now that are kind of flexible and kind of mold to your nail. And so I thought that would be good. Anyway, we'll see. I really just have not had time. Um, my schedule for mom is about two days a week after school and then a weekend day. Um, and so, <laughs> somebody who feels like they never had enough time anyway, that's a lot of time to give up. So I'm having to really um, not take a lot of time for resting. And I, honestly, I think that's the reason I got sick. I think I was just running myself ragged and my body finally just said, you know what, cut it out. That's what my body has to do. It has to shut me down or I will just keep on going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. So anyway, um, I am so obsessed with doing the nails. Some days I'm like, woohoo, two weeks, I don't have to do them. And other days it's like, oh, I wanna try this. But one thing I did try, which is awesome, one reason I stopped doing gel nails on myself a long time ago is because the soak off was like two hours. And I'm like, I do not have time to sit with my hands in chemicals for two hours waiting for them to soak off. And at that time I didn't have an e-file and so I wouldn't file them off and I didn't want to damage my, I didn't want to damage my uh, fingernails at all. And so um, I'm learning. But one of the best things I've learned is how to soak off in a super, super fast way. So I kind of think I'm going to do a video about that because I think it will work. Maybe I'll do it when I soak these off because maybe it'll work. I think it works even for like acrylics. I think the it, it was the same way that I was soaking off before, but with the added element of heat. And I never felt comfortable heating acetone, even though, um, you know, when I was in beauty school, we had uh, little warmers that we used where we put tin foil in and we put acetone in and that's what they put their fingers in to soak off and it happens so quickly. Well, the added element is the heat. The heat is what makes it go faster. So I learned a way to do it with water. So I'm excited to show you guys that. I think I'll do that probably. I mean, I don't know. Obviously this is a makeup based channel and it always will be, but I just thought that might be something fun that would be useful for people, I think. So, that's the plan. And in the meantime, as I learn things, I'll probably be teaching them to you because I think it's really cool. And it's another fun, creative outlet. And I know we like to have pretty nails and I don't know about you, but I refuse to pay as much as you have to pay for them. And I refuse to give up the time that it takes to go sit in a salon to set them off um, you know, all the time that it takes. I just refuse to do it. So, that's my new obsession is dip powder nails and gel nails and learning all the ways of and finding that cool community on video platforms has been fun because there's so much, and most of the people that are on there are DIY, they call our themselves DIY. DIY. I don't even know what I said. 
DIY uh, nail doers and it's so nice to see people you know giving things a try and sharing their experiences with other people and just you know I'm kind of excited like it about it like I was when I found the makeup community because it's like wow you know there's all these people that have the same interests as me and they're as excited about things as I am and you guys know that Pretty Nails has always kind of been part of my repertoire but painting them once or twice a week is just not happening for me. Okay, the only thing I don't love about this palette is that the only shimmers are either super pink, which kind of doesn't really stand out, or gold. And so whenever I use this, I've got purple, and it's kind of a, they're all kind of dark, and they don't really put much of a contrast on my lid. And so what I think I'm going to do is use cookie which is a highlighter but I think I'm gonna go in there with my finger and use that because it's kind of a champagne-y color that I think will really stand out yeah that's pretty so that's kind of what's been going on in my life um, it's like time is going by so fast and so slow and I keep, you know, I keep thinking we're going to get back to normal eventually. Like we're going to get back to um, the way life used to be. And then, you know, here came Delta and then we're going to get back to the way life used to be. And then here came uh, Omicron and oh my goodness. It's like there's not very many people that aren't affected by this. It's like if you haven't already... You probably will or know somebody who will get it and um, it's like almost unavoidable that even people that are fully vaccinated I got it when I was fully vaccinated so it's one of those things that it's just part of our life now and I hope it's not something that has to be at the forefront of our mind forever but right now it is and that's like this whole week the whole time I was sick I thought you know I'm sick, I have COVID. <laughs> you know, it's like it makes you just a paranoid freak. It's like, okay, if, you know, if something's wrong with me, it must be COVID, if, especially whenever the symptoms were so similar. I'm pulling a color out of an Ace, not Ace Butte, a Ciate London um, Woman What's Your Superpower. I am Woman What's Your Superpower palette which I intend on doing a video with just because I love the name and what it's about and I thought about doing that today but I knew that I wouldn't have time to go into all the names of the people that are listed for the shade names all right that's what we got for the eyes I'm leaving it pretty simple um so gonna without my superhero by It Cosmetics. My latest uh, cocktail of mascara products is the Lancome CILS, Sills Booster XL Primer, and then uh, Sky High by Maybelline, and then NARS Climax, and then of course my MAC on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and curl my eyelashes and pick out a lip color and I'll be back. Alright, I decided on Dolly Danger by Buxom Lip Liner and a Color Your Smile Gloss by a Jar of Cosmetics called Be Delicious. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on, then I'm going to go in and do the rest of my eyes. So I'll probably just zoom through that for you guys. I'm going to put on some James Ingram and sing my heart out. That's what I'm going to do because that's a feel good kind of thing and if you ever really really want to feel good in the morning and you're a Christian like me then you need to listen to Elevation Worship with Maverick City Music Shall Not Want and that will pump you up every time I'm getting dressed that's what I listen to and when I leave I'm just like I'm gonna go tackle this day
Okay guys, that is it for me. Thank you so much for being here. I missed you, I missed this so much, and I'm gonna try harder to get it done. It's one of those things where it's like you have so many things going on in your life that you have to put things that you enjoy and love on the back burner sometimes for things that are more important. And right now my mom and my dad and my classroom are more important. I just have to um, keep plugging along and drop in here when I can to see you guys. Please let me know how you're doing in the comment section. I miss you. Um, I've missed birthdays. I've missed babies being born. I feel like I've just been out of the loop so much. So tell me how you're doing. Please, I really, really, really want to know. Leave me a message down in the comment section. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, take care and God bless. Bye guys. And just because I have to, I'm going to do some glamour shots for you in three, two, and one. Baby, 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 baby. You driving me wild, you driving me so crazy. Got me acting out, got me trying to stay sober. Got me trying to stay sober. One of your love and I'm out here hungover. Wanna take you to London, Paris Make some Times for cherish Maybe there's no comparing to you Don't need Keisha you. caring Don't want begging, sharing Girl, I swear that It ain't fair, it ain't fair that